A Resilient Life The Mindset of a Day Trader Katie woke up even earlier than usual the next morning, with the sense that today was a big day. She forgot creamer in her coffee, and she forgot to put soap in her dishwasher. But the taste of the coffee reminded her of the creamer. Nothing reminded her of the soap. The dishes came out looking clean anyways, whatever germs might really have been still on them. She left the kitchen, a little less spotless than usual, and went and settled herself in her living room, where she had set up all her day trading necessities months ago. She had three monitors, which was more space than she really knew what to do with, a super powerful computer, and a backup internet connection in case something went wrong with the Wi-Fi. She kept checking the clock every five minutes, though it was only seven in the morning, and there were still a few hours to wait before the market opened. Katie got through the next three hours somehow, and then buckled down to day trading. It was an awful experience, as nerve-wracking as the first time she'd driven a car. She was painfully on the alert the whole time, desperate to let nothing slip by her. After working for hours, she stopped for the day, feeling absolutely exhausted. But she'd done well, and she figured it would become less stressful with time. Like driving a car, everyone's first road trip was exhausting, but then it turned into second nature. So Katie kept plugging away at it, day trading for four hours every morning, and then having a quick lunch before heading off to her job. Things were becoming easier as she streamlined her process and smoothed out her strategy. But although Katie no longer felt under high levels of stress the whole time, she did go into a bit of a tailspin every time she lost money on a trade. Even though, after a month of trading, her totals were firmly in the black, she still looked at all her losses and obsessed over how badly she was doing during a whole weekend. This isn't going to work, Katie said to herself. I just keep making mistakes. I've been trying so hard to improve my strategy. I don't understand why I still make bad trades. Last week I made my worst trade yet, and that was after 19 days of practice. I thought I would get better. But no matter how hard she tried, Katie couldn't keep from making an occasional losing trade. Whenever that happened, she beat herself up over it. Sometimes she even stopped work for the day. For a while, she used that time to refine her strategy. But eventually she stopped trying. She'd refined it until she was sick of it. Nothing seemed capable of eliminating these pesky losses. On days when Katie's first trade turned out to be a loss, she sometimes didn't make any money at all because she couldn't work up the nerve to try again. With her bad habit of looking at every little loss as if it were a massive failure, Katie's overall success was far worse on month two than it had been in her first month. She found that she hadn't made enough to cover her brokerage fees and decided that was it. Day trading was clearly not for her. She'd go invest in some long-term solid stock and keep working her way up the corporate ladder. Maybe in 30 years she'd have enough capital or enough credit to start her own business. But it wasn't happening anytime soon. With that in mind, she went out for a stroll along the beach. Quitting was the only sensible thing at this point. Like that time she'd decided never to try acting again since she'd failed to get what she wanted the first time, Katie decided that she was done with day trading too. She'd move on and put that embarrassing failure behind her. She sat in the sand for a long time, watching the crashing waves march solemnly up to the shore, deluged in spray 
Retreat, repeat. Over and over, in a soothing rhythm, the water fell, accomplishing nothing today, nothing tomorrow. But over the course of centuries, turning pebble after pebble into sandy bits. The sun, sinking beyond the horizon, lit the blue sky with gorgeous streaks of red and orange and pink. Slowly it set, as slowly as it rose every morning, to run its course along the silent sky, accomplishing nothing today, nothing tomorrow. But over the course of years, turning little acorns into mighty oaks. Katie had always been a sunrise person, always preferred the wild freshness of morning to evening's best light. But today, she felt the evening's charm, its haunting sadness tinged with hope, its silent promise of another better day to come. So she sat on. Until the last ray of light had faded from the western sky, and the crisp sea breeze brought her out of her reverie, she found that Aaron had left her a text message. Where are you? I'm at your place to drop off the kitchen knives you asked for. Katie sped up in her walk, feeling guilty for having forgotten that tonight was the time she'd arranged for Aaron. To drop off the knives she brought her from her last business trip. B R B. She texted. She met Aaron in the apartment lobby and apologized profusely. You forgot me, didn't you? Aaron grinned. 